Let's talk layout. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori and this is my tiny house on wheels. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. I've had a couple of my friends recently reach out to me and let me know that they have people that they know that have recently purchased fans. I'm so excited by the number of messages like these that I've gotten recently. Josh and I love this lifestyle and we love van life so much and that is why I started my channel to share my journey. Josh and I have learned a lot of great things through the two vans that we've built together and I wanted to share some of those things with you guys today. So originally I was planning on doing a van build and design video all as one, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the layout planning should definitely be its own video. Planning the layout for a van build is probably one of the most time consuming, the most stressful, and one of the most important parts of building a van. I'm gonna go ahead and blow out this candle because it's making like a weird sound. Okay. The problem with planning a layout is you can't really plan too far ahead of purchasing a van. I tried really hard to figure out a way around this, but until you know exactly what van you're going to be purchasing or have purchased, you really don't know exactly the space that you're working with. There are so many different wheelbases available, there are so many different types of vans available, that I really think it's best to wait until you've purchased your van to start planning. I'm not a very patient person myself, so this was absolutely infuriating to me, and it just really pushed me to find that van and get it in my driveway so I could start planning. There is a lot of research and prioritizing and kind of figuring out what you want and don't want in your space that you can do prior to purchasing the van. So we'll start there. On, 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 on. The first step I recommend to anyone building a van is getting out a notebook and kind of figuring out your game plan. Each van is so tailored to those who live in it and what it is used for. I actually don't think I've ever seen two vans that look exactly alike. People get so creative with their layouts and the ways that they find to store things and save space. So I highly recommend digging through some other van life content to look for layout ideas and kind of get a feel for what kind of things you're wanting out of your van. Personally, I always start on Pinterest. I absolutely love Pinterest, especially for projects like this one. I have an entire van build board that I spent two years working on prior to buying our first van. I will link my Pinterest page and my van build board in the description box for you guys if you are looking for any inspiration or you would like to see the inspiration that went into creating this van build. You guys can head over there and check that out. So after you've done all your Pinteresting, your dream boarding, you got your dream van all come to life in your brain, and you get your hands on your van, and now what? On, on. On, on. When Josh and I brought this van home, it was a completely empty, basically just white rectangle on wheels. We grabbed our pens and papers and some masking tape and headed outside. I think sitting in the space that you're gonna be designing and working with is super important. So Josh and I would sit on the floor in here and just kind of bounce ideas back and forth off of each other. A couple of good first questions to ask yourself are what are you using your van for? Are you living in your van full-time or part-time? Are you gonna be traveling and out in nature more often? Or are you gonna be staying in the city? It really is important to consider your lifestyle and how you are going to be utilizing your van when you go about picking your layout. So we live in our van full-time most of the year in the city and there are three of us. So, since this van is our full-time home, we decided to do a little bit more of an in-depth van build because there were a lot more things that we knew that we wanted to have in here so that we can live in here comfortably all year long. We wanted the van to feel spacious and livable. We wanted to be comfortable even though there are three of us in here. And we really wanted it to feel like a home, very cozy and home-like because we knew by making our build more spacious and more livable that van life full-time in the city would be more sustainable for us long-term. 
So our priority list included a big kitchen because I love eating and I love cooking. We wanted a very spacious floor plan so that we had lots of room for all of us to walk around. We wanted a full bed. In our last band build, our bed was horizontally and us both being quite tall, this just doesn't really work that comfortably for us. So we decided in this build, since we did go ahead and get the extended wheelbase, we wanted a full bed that went this way. At this point, we also were trying to decide if we were going to include a bathroom and shower or not. We eventually decided not to include those things. We did not have them in our first van and that worked out just fine for us. So here we are. After a couple of hours of frustrating planning, replanning, we kind of had an idea of what we thought we wanted to go with. So the next thing that I recommend that you do, and I think this is super important, it's a really great way to get a feel for what you're going to be building into your space and what kind of space you're going to have left over when you're done. On, on. We took some blue painter's tape. We taped out exactly what we had designed on paper and taped it onto the floor. So this gave us a really good idea of the floor space that we were gonna have to move around. I could lay my yoga mat down and see if I had enough space for it. We could kind of maneuver around each other and see if we were gonna be too cramped to pass by one another in the walkways and things like that. After this was done, we did some more redesigning and more redesigning. You can even go as far as like cutting cardboard into the shape of what you are planning to put in and like kind of fake build it to really get an idea of what you're working with. The more that you can visualize the final build and really see in your mind where everything is going, I think the smoother your band build will go. When you are doing your planning and your initial drawings, make sure you also remember to account for your water tank, your battery bank, propane tank if you have one, those kind of things, because all of those things do take up quite a bit of space in the benches and cabinetry that you do install. So you wanna make sure that you're accounting for those things ahead of time because they're much harder to fix later down the line. If I can stress anything to you guys in this video, it is this. The planning is super, super important. Spend your time on it review it, sleep on it before you start building, come back to it again, build it on cardboard. Everything just goes so much smoother if you know exactly what you're building, know where everything's going. There are definitely hiccups along the way to be accounted for, but the more time and effort you put into the planning, the more likely your van build is to turn out exactly how you want it, up to your standards, and completely functional and useful for how you live in your van. On, on. So now I kind of want to break down how these things kind of trickled into our design and how it affected the overall layout of our build. So like I said, we live in the city most of the year, which means we are stealth camping fairly often. To make that the most comfortable for us and the most stealthy, we decided to go with a pocket door in our layout and we also decided to skip out on windows in the back of our layout. Both of these things we decided for stealth reasons, and if we were out in nature more often or used our van differently, I definitely would have installed windows. I wouldn't change the pocket door, absolutely love the pocket door, but if you'd like to see all of my other list of van life essentials or things that you would never catch me living in a van without, I will link that video up here for you guys if you want to check it out. On, 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 on. So we came to our first problem trying to figure out how we could have a full bed and a lot of floor space and we just came to the conclusion that that means that we don't have a fixed bed. There is a lot of people that really don't like having a convertible bed. I've gotten quite a few comments from people that this is just an absolute no-go for them. We love it. So again, make sure you tailor your build to you because you're going to be the one living in it. So that's all that really matters. On, on. A lot of vans that I've seen on Pinterest and Instagram do the two bench and table arrangement that does turn into the bed at night. We liked the idea of this, but it just takes up so much space in the back of the van. And the amount of floor space that you have is very limited by the narrowness created by the two benches, I guess. So we wanted to have a wider floor space. It was really important to me that I was able to roll out my yoga mat on the floor in here. Van life is very dependent on the weather and if I am not able to go outside and do my exercises, I wanted to make sure I still had ample space to comfortably move my body and, you know, 
take care of myself. In order to have a wider floor space in our living room area, we decided to go with an L-shaped couch and a pull-out bed, but the pull-out does not quite reach the bench on the other side in our build, so we have a little insert that is stored away during the day that completes our bed, and this allowed us to just save ourselves those couple of inches of floor space, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it makes a world of difference, especially with Haley. We wanted her to have lots of space to walk around and play so that she doesn't ever feel cooped up either. Another reason I didn't want to do the double bench design is that moving these cushions out of the way to get in the benches is such a pain. Like, anything that goes in that back bench, if I don't get it out in the morning when I put the bed away or at night when I get the bed out, it stays there. In order to open that back bench while the couch is out, pretty much all of the cushions have to be taken off and it is just a pain. But in the way that we designed our build, we have benches opposite the couch and the lids open. Not having cushions there makes accessing those benches much, much easier. We actually keep our laundry in the bench that I'm sitting on now. So I needed to keep that very easy access because if it's not, everything just ends up on the floor and vans get messy very quickly. Since I'm currently sitting on a bench, we bought ourselves this nice little bar stool seat that we can just kind of move around the van. So I'm currently sitting on that. It also creates kind of an extra seat around our table here, which is great. It makes this back area much more versatile and super, super spacious. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about with that. On, on. All right, let's move on to that big kitchen that I love so much. Our kitchen does take up, I think, more space than our bed. I think the kitchen in this van is actually bigger than the kitchen I had in my college apartment, so I'm very pleased with how it came out. I wanted lots and lots of counter space. I do a lot of cooking and we keep a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables in here, so we wanted a lot of food storage and a lot of counter space. So we knew that the kitchen was gonna take up a large portion of our build. When we were picking out cabinets and things like that, we really wanted to think about storage, what we were keeping in here, and how much storage we really needed. We definitely did have space to do upper cabinets along this wall as well as on the other wall, but the more things you put in a build, the more crowded and more cramped that it begins to feel. So we decided to kind of go through everything that we keep in our van and make sure that we weren't putting in more cabinet space than we really needed so that we could have wall space to hang things up, a bookshelf, space to kind of decorate it and make it feel like home. Picking out your appliances while you're doing your planning I also think is super important. All of the appliances for vans come in various dimensions and sizes and it's really important to understand how much space those things are going to take up so that you can figure out where you're going to place them. I knew that I wanted to have a bigger sink so I needed to account for the counter space for that. We knew we wanted a fridge so we needed to measure out how much space that was going to take up. I just got the dimensions from the description on Amazon. That way I knew exactly how big it was going to be even though we didn't have it yet. We just switched out our fridge from a front-loading fridge to a top-loading fridge. If you missed that, I will link last week's video up here for you guys. And I actually am super loving, super loving the top-loading fridge. I can fit so much more stuff in it. We have a whole extra pantry space now, which is super great. And we got super, super freaking lucky that it happened to fit exactly in the dimensions that we had already built in with our other fridge. On, 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 on. So I know this video was a little bit all over the place, that's kind of just how my brain works, so let's just recap really quick. Make sure you spend an ample amount of time planning. This is a very important step in the van build process. I'm super impatient, so it was really hard not to get ahead of myself in this department. But spending the time planning was super worth it and we're really happy with how everything turned out. Pinterest is your best friend, Instagram as well. Look around for inspiration from other van lifers. There are so many amazing, beautiful builds and people are so clever and have come up with so many great space saving tips. So feel free to look around and incorporate some of those things in your build. And remember most importantly to design your build for you. Every van is going to be different and the van that you live in should be built to tailor to your lifestyle and your needs and I think that is the most important tip that I have for anyone designing a van is to really think 
about your life and tailor your van build to your lifestyle instead of moving your lifestyle into a van that may not work for you. I think I covered anything, but if you guys have any questions for me, please drop them in the comments below. I'm going to hang out there for an hour after this video goes live. I'm so excited that so many people are starting van life journeys this year. I hope this video was helpful to any of you guys who may be at that beginning stage of your van life journey. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up for me and make sure to hit that subscribe button because I have an all things van build tips and tricks video coming up pretty soon for you guys. So you're not going to want to miss that. But until then, I will see you guys next Sunday. So kindly interrupted by the city of Columbus reminding me that it is Wednesday at noon with the, with the weekly tornado sirens. Hello everyone and welcome back to my It's absolutely infuriate. This was absolutely infuriate. A couple of good couple... Exactly.